Hello and welcome. Uh, today we're going to take a look at colour theory, which is one of my favourite topics in landscape photography. And not just the theory side, but also some practical tips and applications that hopefully you can go away and apply in your own images and help to refine the viewing experience as well. So let's get started. First up, why does colour matter? Well, so often we're used to experiencing great light and striking compositions, but a solid appreciation and understanding of colour can take a good image and help to make it great. But it's not just about cranking up Lightroom's saturation slider and calling it a day. The important thing to remember is that subtlety and refinement is key. And the colours present in an image, and the colours that we choose to admit, just as importantly, can have a drastic effect on the viewing experience and how it's received by others. How exactly? Well, I've condensed it down into these three key topics that really impact how an image is perceived by others. The first is attention, and our eyes have a tendency to drift towards warmer and more saturated areas. So with this knowledge, we might look to avoid warmer areas in the periphery, as this can be distracting and draw the viewer out of the photo rather than into it. So for example, on the right hand side here in this example, you can see that I've cooled down the rocks, cooled down the water, and even cooled down the top of this sky, helping to lead the viewer through the image from cool to a little bit warmer to the warmest and most saturated part of the image in the top hand right here. And that leads into the second part about how color can impact our images. And that's through depth because cooler areas tend to recede into the image while warmer areas tend to come forward out of the image. So something you may want to consider is actually cooling down the shadows and warming up the highlights to help create that color contrast and better direct that viewing experience for others. Likewise, the colors present in an image have a massive impact on the mood of an image. So when it comes to post-processing, when we refine the colors through white balance, through HSL sliders, and we're actually going to explore that in some Lightroom examples at the end of this, that really impacts how the image is perceived. So we actually might want to cool down a forest to get a really eerie, moody feeling. Or if we have a nice bright sunrise, we may wish to make it even warmer to make it lighter and more inviting for the viewer. So that's a quick look at how color impacts how our images are perceived. But how do we actually go about using color in our own images, in our own post-processing? The key concepts that I want to get across here is control and constraint. Because if we were to use a kaleidoscope of colors in the entire image, it's actually quite visually distracting. And when we have that wide range of hues of colors present, they're all competing for our attention. And I know when I was starting on early in photography, I look for a really big, bold sunrise and push up the saturation and vibrance. But often an explosion of color is too overwhelming. It's quite jarring to the viewing experience. It doesn't seem natural. So the key there is control and constraint. And the concept underlying all of this is what's known as color theory. And it's quite a detailed, in-depth topic. And there's a lot more other videos and articles on color theory. So I'd recommend that if you do find this interesting, if you want to delve a little bit deeper into that world, just Google or go onto YouTube and search a little bit more about color theory. And there's a ton of resources out there. But for the sake of today's video, I want to walk you through these three color harmonies. Now, a color harmony is a group or collection of colors that actually work well together and complement one another to help bring a sense of pleasing order to the whole scene. Now, there's actually a range of different color harmonies. There's, I think there's five, six, maybe seven different categories. But for now, I just want to focus on these three of analogous, monochromatic, and complementary. And we're going to explore each of those in more detail. But before we do, just note that color harmonies are a tool, not a rule. So use them as a guide, but don't let these categories limit how you process or share your images. And first up in the color harmonies is our analogous harmony. Now, analogous colors are neighbors on the color wheel, and you can see that here. Here's a color wheel of all the colors bleeding into one another. And this collection here is an analogous harmony. And we can achieve this when the range of colors present in our image is very nearby in this color harmony. So for example, we might have a lush green forest with some small patches of yellow light. 
Well, you can see on this seascape example here, it's a very blue, magenta, purple scene. There's no reds or yellows in the sky, and this is a nice sort of soft, gentle gradient from these pinks and purples to blue in the sky, leading around to blue in the rocks and the water. And you can see that here in this color palette here. And these analogous colors really work well together. They're quite pleasing to look at. Now, when it comes to processing, we can look to darken or reduce the saturation in outlying hues. So say, for example, in this seascaping image, we might have had a piece of yellow seaweed here. Now we could look to reduce the saturation in that yellow, or we could actually squish those outlying colors into this analogous range. So we could take a yellow and maybe introduce some bluer tones into that color to help reduce the prominence of this outlying color. Or we could actually look to squish the outliers into this analogous range. So say for example in this seascape, this sunrise sky had more reds and oranges. We could use Lightroom's HSL sliders to take those reds and shift the hues to more of the purple magenta range and away from the reds and bring them into this close color harmony here, these analogous colors close by. So that's an analogous color harmony. Next up, we have a monochromatic color harmony. And these harmonies consist of a very tight cluster of hues, really only varying in brightness or saturation to help emphasize light and form in the scene. And this color harmony works great for flatter, duller images. I like to use monochromatic color harmonies when I've got a dull, cool twilight scene where I can take the entire scene and shift it all into a nice, cool blue hue. And that was the example in the forest scene from earlier. This image was quite cool with the fog around, but I shifted the entire white balance down to blue, removing any yellows or greens that might have been present in the image and just having this blue monochrome color harmony. Coming back to this example, you can see in this forest that it's pretty much just green present in the image, but it does vary via brightness and saturation throughout the image. Now, when it comes to processing for this monochromatic color harmony, the best tip is to take the global white balance and shift that into a particular hue. So for this forest scene, I shifted the tint down to green to make sure the entire image was green. We're actually going to do that in a Lightroom example shortly. And if the image becomes unnaturally green or unnaturally blue after shifting the entire global white balance, we can just bring down the saturation so it's less jarring. So that's our second color harmony. And the third color harmony that I'd like to introduce today is this complementary harmony. And these exist when we have colors opposite one another of the color wheel. Now a classic example in Australia here is a nice seascape sunrise where we have blue water, blue rocks under an orange red sky. And when we have these complementary colors, these cooler blues and these warmer oranges, they look great in contrast with one another. And a simple way to help emphasize and achieve this color harmony is through the split toning module in Lightroom or luminosity mask in Photoshop. And through these tools, we can select the brighter part of the image, the highlights, and warm up just the brighter parts while actually cooling down the shadows to help emphasize that contrast between the two. And with these three color harmony examples that I've shown in the color wheel, this is just one particular complementary harmony. We could, for example, have a nice green forest complemented with some bright red flowers. As long as they're opposite on the color wheel, they align to this complementary harmony. So that's our three color harmonies for today. We've got our analogous, which are similar in color. We've got our monochromatic, which is just the one hue. And here we've got our complementary harmony, which is opposite one another on the color wheel. And before we jump into Lightroom to show you some examples, I just want to talk you through these three tools and tips that you might actually look to apply in your own images next time you go and process them. So first up, this may be an obvious one, but it's to balance your white balance. So often I've seen photos that have great composition, great light, but the white balance is just off. There's something about it that just doesn't seem natural. So firstly, make sure you shoot all your images in RAW so you can adjust this in post-processing without degrading the image. And just simply experiment by dragging those two white balance sliders, the temperature from blues to yellows and oranges, and the tint, which goes from the green to magenta, 
and just drag those white balance sliders and see the effect that it has on your image. Perhaps you might want to further enhance the warmth in a nice golden hour scene. And likewise, in seascape images, I found that adding a touch of magenta to the sky really helps to make that sky pop. Next up, and this is something we just talked about previously with the complementary harmony, is around warm light and cooler shadows. So consider using Lightroom split toning module to create that color separation between the light areas and the dark areas, which also helps to emphasize that depth in this otherwise 2D or static image. And thirdly, we can help our images align with one of these three color harmonies by shifting the HSL sliders. So where we might have an outlying image that doesn't quite align with our grouping of colors, we can use the HSL slider to shift that hue to help bring it in line with the other colors. Or we could simply desaturate colors that clash. Now, for example, in this forest scene here, I remember when I was processing this, there was some green moss on the back of these trees. Now, using the HSL sliders, I took the green saturation slider and brought that down and desaturated the green here so it wasn't prominent in the image. Now that's a quick overview of the theory and some quick practical tips on how you can apply color in your own landscape images. Now I wanna jump over to Lightroom and just show you two raw photos and putting some of these tips and tricks into practice. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and you can see here we've got two images. These are raw, straight out of camera. This first one is a drone photo looking top down on a redwood forest. This image was taken on sunrise and it's very flat, dull lighting. So looking at this raw photo, I feel like it's quite lifeless, but also there is a range of hues present. Well, I can see that there's greens, but there's also yellows, some blues, and even some orangey tones in the branches where they're showing. Now for me, I feel like all these tones are clashing. So I think bringing the entire photo into a monochromatic color harmony will work quite well. So I'm picturing a nice green lush forest scene for this image. I'm going to start with some quick exposure and contrast tweaks. I'm just going to brighten up the entire exposure a little bit and just tweak the dynamic range, bring up the blacks like this, the whites down. I'm just going to add a quick radial filter around the outside of the image, just serving as a vignette, just focusing the attention on the center of the trees here. And I'm just going to bring down the exposure on the outside of that vignette, just like that. Okay, so that's some quick exposure tweaks. Now we're just going to look at the color side of things. As this was shot in RAW, I'm going to tweak these two white balance sliders to help realize that lush green forest scene. Firstly, I'm going to take the tint slider and bring that way down to the green and really bring out those lush green tones. Likewise, this is still looking a little bit too cool. This was taken on that pre-dawn light. It's very soft, but it's also quite cool. There's no direct sunlight here. So I'm just going to warm up the temperature, not massively. I don't want this to be yellow, but I want this to be a nice lush forest. Just about there or so, I think we'll do. If we just look at the before and the after, you can see how we've tweaked that. We've brought out the green lush tones. It's still quite flat, so I'm going to pump up the vibrance just a little bit. I'll probably push this a little bit further than I normally would, just so it comes out on the video. Just to about there. Now, before we move to the next image, there's one other little trick that I want to show you in here. Now, I'm just going to zoom into this tree in particular, and hopefully you can see in the video that there's actually quite a few orange-yellow flecks in this tree, also in here underlying the branches. Now that's fine to leave in, but for me, I feel like that's a little bit jarring considering we're going for this overall green, lush forest feel. So to rein in those warmer orange tones, I'm going to move down to the HSL sliders down here in Lightroom. Now if you can't see all of these, you may be on the color selection here, so just tick HSL to see the full range. Now looking at the orange tones, what I'm going to do is shift these oranges over to yellow and then take these yellows and shift these yellows over to green. So bringing both of these into the green range. So starting with orange, I'm going to move this up towards the yellow end and then taking the yellows, I'm gonna push those up into the green end like that. So that might be a little bit too strong. I'm just gonna dial that back just a little bit so it's not too unnatural. And just looking at just this change here, if I turn that off, 
can see here that's a little bit warmer, a little bit more orange and yellow. If I turn that on, you can see that it's really changed that to green. So it's really got that monochromatic color harmony now. And if I zoom back out, I can show you the before and the after. Now that's just a quick little edit. I haven't gone into too much detail. And hopefully you can see how these quick color tweaks have taken this sort of flat, lifeless image and helped to move it into this really nice, lush, sort of more pleasing on the eye forest scene. Now next up, I'm going to look at this sunrise photo taken at Bombo Quarry out at Kiama on the south coast of New South Wales. Now when I was on location here, I took another exposure for the waves crashing around the rocks here. And this is actually just the sky exposure, but I'm just using this to illustrate the color principles that we discussed earlier. Now looking at this, I'm thinking that a complementary color harmony is going to work really well here. Where we have the nice big bright warm sky with some warm reflections here, and that will be contrasted against these bluer rocks in shadow, and also this bluer water down here as well. So as this is the raw photo from the sky, I'm just going to go and make some quick exposure tweaks by bringing up the dark exposure for the sky, but now bringing down the highlights to retain that detail in those brighter areas. And I'm just going to lift the blacks. I did have a brighter exposure for the rocks and the water. This is just trying to get everything out of this one exposure to help demonstrate some of these color examples. I'm going to take a gradient filter here and just darken the top of the sky acting as a little vignette to help bring the attention down into the warmer areas because I want this area to be the focus of the scene. So with this gradient selected, I'm going to bring down the exposure ever so slightly. I think that's enough. And like with the previous image, now we're only going to affect the color of the image and to see what impact that has on this image and how it's perceived. Firstly, I think the global white balance is pretty good in this image. I don't need to change too much, but I did mention in the slides that adding a little bit of magenta to the sky here just helps that sky retain a little bit more color and help pop as well. So a little bit of magenta. And in terms of the temperature, I think it's okay. We're gonna affect this more specifically in the split toning module down below. And just so these colors come through in the video, I'm just gonna pump up the vibrance here so everything's a little bit more pronounced and a bit easier to see in the video side of things. So now I'm going to move down to the split toning module, which is just below the HSL here. And you can see here, we have the option to affect the highlights and also the option to affect the shadows. So firstly, the highlights, I'm going to select a nice warm orange about there on the color range and pump up the saturation of that color, just affecting the highlights. Normally I'll do it at about 10 or less. Once again, subtlety is key, but I'm just gonna push this a little bit further just so it's a bit easier to see and come through hopefully. So I'm gonna push that up to about 20 just for this one. And for the shadows, I'm going to do the opposite. So where I had this nice warm orange in the brighter part of the areas, to help achieve that complementary color harmony, I'm gonna choose the opposite color, which would be a nice blue cool tone and push that into the shadow region. So I'm gonna select a blue of about there and push this up a little bit to about 20 or so, just to really emphasize that effect. I think that's enough for now. So just looking at the split toning module, if I turn this effect off and on, you can see that there's a lot more blue here and it's even introduced some blue in the sky, which I like, because this is what I call a color vignette. And you can see here, it's blue in the sky, blue in the rocks and water and down to the rocks again. And this acts as a bit of a vignette around the outside of the image, helping once again to get that sort of sense of depth through the image up to the warmer section here. And that's the split toning side, but I also wanted to delve into the HSL sliders for this image because for this complementary color harmony to exist, we actually still need to rein in the colors. Currently, the sky is going from blue to red to orange to yellow. And that's actually okay. But for me, I want this to really sort of fall in that complementary bucket, which means having sort of blues and then oranges. So actually having this yellow here is a little bit distracting because it's too much of a range in the sky. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see the effect of these changes. And taking our yellow slider, I'm actually going to shift the yellow towards the orange side 
and actually take some of the oranges and make the oranges a little bit more red. So taking the yellows, we're going to shift the yellows to about there. I think there's enough. And take some of the oranges and just shift the oranges a little bit towards the red. Now, because we move these towards the red side, this red is actually a little bit too saturated. It's actually a bit too jarring. So now I'm going to take the red and bring this down just slightly in the saturation. So it's a little bit less intense. So just looking at these HSL changes, if I turn this module off and now on, you can see that it's just reined in those extra yellow tones and helped ease that gradient up through the sky. So it's less of a stepped color change, it's more of a gentle color change through the sky. And zooming back out, if I look at the before, this is what we had before. And now if I turn on all of our changes, it's really helped to emphasize those cooler shadows and those warmer highlights. Now, once again, this is just a quick little edit to take you through some of those concepts that we explored before. But hopefully you can see the power that just tweaking a couple of these sliders has on the final image here. So thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Color theory is really one of my favorite topics in landscape photography. And as I mentioned, it's such a deep uh, and at times complicated topic, but if you do want to learn more and delve into the world of color theory, uh, jump onto YouTube or Google and just search color theory. Uh, there's some other great articles and videos out there, but hopefully this is a bit of an overview and introduction into the world of color theory. Thanks for watching. If you do have any questions on anything that was explored or talked about today, please leave a comment below. More than happy to help answer any questions. Uh, but until next time, take care.